Okay guys, you see the link in the description. You know what is gonna happen at one point during this video. They are who we thought they were. Raid Shadow Legends, have you heard of it? Do you guys know it is a uh, free to play turn-based RPG done right? Wait, I'm gonna read this ad read like David Dobrik reads his ad reads, hold on. So this video is brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends. You've seen them how we put out some bangers on the main channel. Raid. Raid. Thanks to Raid for sponsoring this video. Raid is one of the top three ranked RPGs on the Google Play Store and it's just been nominated as a finalist for Google Play's Best of 2019 User's Choice Award. You can gather orcs, Undead, Knights, Elves, 400 champions for you to personally collect and customize. The game is growing super fast, so if you're a lazy sack of shit, they introduced a new feature called Auto Battle Mode, so you can just focus on the collection and strategy portion of the game. The new missions feature is a fun way to progress in the game, and they're even coming out and adding new champions every month. So please, if you want to play Raid Shadow Legends at literally any time, use my link in the description and get 50,000 free silver and an epic champion as part of the new player program. Thanks again to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. What's up guys? Welcome back to my second channel. Today's video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. <laughs> Steven Seagal. I hope the pure ferocity of that name alone does not demonetize this video. So I covered Steven Seagal's 2016 movie, Code of Honor, and it was easily one of the most amusing train wrecks to watch. These are the henchmen of the biggest crime boss? This guy looks like a Postmates driver. You want a crab ragoon? <laughs> Cherry on top being that Steven Seagal is now a multifaceted superstar for dog shit action movies. I wanted to see what his newest project was, and I found it. And spoiler alert, it's worse than Code of Honor. And I would normally just tell you the title of the movie, but it's funnier if I have his Twitter tell you instead. General Commander. I got my own fish to fry. General Commander. We're just not gonna do that. General Commander. General Commander. General Commander. Commander. General Commander. General Commander. General Commander. General Commander. Oh, look, a tweet that has nothing to do with General Commander. Dear friends, did you know that Steven was once considered for the role of Batman? We think he would have been brilliant. We think he would have been brilliant. Me, Steven Seagal's social media guy, and Steven Seagal think he would have been brilliant. I for one love this tweet because this is a very generous way of saying that at one point during a casting meeting, one guy said, hey, what about Seagal? And then they swiftly moved on. General Commander is a 2019 action movie and Steven Seagal's latest project that he has starred in. The movie opens up with texts that are reminiscent of the dark web unboxing disclaimers. I think this type of shit is a little gimmicky, but that's not really my problem with this. It's that this type of tone is almost never replicated again in the whole movie. And these texts of course come after the two minute opening credits sequence that uses actual scenes from the movie as B-roll. Not to mention this is fucking disgusting to look at. And I know you guys are dying to see Seagal leisurely murder extras, but we have to talk about the editing in this movie because it's probably the worst thing about it. Code of Honor suffered a bit from this. Random slow motion strippers, you guys all remember it. You know what, before you get a feel for this movie, let's play a fun little game. I'm gonna show you three clips from this movie and I want you to tell me in the comments which one do you think I tampered with. Here are the clips. Let me take it! This for my husband, okay? Go ahead, do it. Now that you've seen them, go ahead, vote in the comments, let me know which one you think I tampered with. Done? Okay. Now you're probably assuming that I'm just gonna say that I didn't fuck with any of them. This movie's just incompetent. But that's too easy. The truth is, the correct answer is B. B was the clip that I tampered with. And when I say tampered with, I mean I fixed it. This is the original clip. Shut the fuck up, I need this for my husband, okay? Go ahead, 
Do it. This is the most over-edited movie I think I have ever watched. The very first scene is all you need to watch to understand what I mean. I haven't touched shit. Let me know what you think. The thing that offends me the most, it's not that I've risked my life for my country and done things that most people couldn't have done. This country that I love so much, country is the- Am I overreacting? I just thought that a simple interrogation scene like this doesn't need a Suicide Squad fan edit. Doesn't need the poor man saw trap edit. Or maybe they're doing all these edits because what Steven Seagal is saying makes no fucking sense. To us, to my country, country, slaughtered, slaughtered. That's the stuff they're not telling you. Where we have literally two governments inside a gov government, nobody would have thought 20 years ago if I would have told them. Seagal a thousand percent freeballed this entire scene. This is like a shitty woke haiku. Seagal sounds like he's fresh off a Joe Rogan podcast. Two weeks earlier. So the movie. Steven Seagal is tracking down a Cambodian hooker. A sentence I'm surprised has only been said once. Seagal is in the CIA and his team of recruits are trying to track down one of the big dogs involved in the black market. So they decide to follow one of the foot soldiers of the operation to find their in. Oh, for fuck's sake. You know, call me crazy. I think Seagal has a lot more influence in these movies than I initially thought. So, after assessing the situation and tracking the coordinates of- a stripper. Excuse me? Cambodian hookers. Chinese titties or I walk. Mr. Seagal, Florence please. Who are puppies? Okay, um. Gerald, run a quick casting call for some models to play some extras, please. Belt and Aikido. Hey, do we really need this guy? I've met Putin a few times. What is Jean-Claude uh, doing nowadays? I said my Russian is better than his. <laughs> Still I'm working on Rambo 6? I make great empanadas. <laughs> I've seen a girl pull these same exact moves, and the crowd does not erupt in applause. This is like $9 max. That's her, Zach. Dress. It's showtime. Okay, uh, how much for? I mean, a girl so beautiful. Three hundred, two hours. Ouch! Really? That's. I do. Uh huh. Everything, every way. Oh. Whatever you like. Now I'm ashamed to admit this, but I'm not up to date on the rates of Cambodian hookers. But three hundred dollars for two hours sounds like a Black Friday sale to me. And speaking of Black Friday sales, boom! Fifteen percent off my new merch. Just use code Dongers at checkout. That discount is only available till December third. You can get that at Teespring.com/badpong. So CIA man gets her to a hotel room and she spikes his drink. He obviously knows this, so he preemptively takes a pill that'll wake him up in ten minutes. I get it, it's a fucking computer robot gizmo. These sounds are distracting. Is it engaging facial recognition? Is it tracking the coordinates of something? I don't think it is. I have a little surprise for you. Don't you fucking turn away like this isn't why you still make movies. What are you getting turned on, Anna? What the hell does that mean? Guys, this is getting real. So the hooker calls in the organ harvesters and they start getting to work while the CIA boys start getting into position. It's back online. Guys, this is getting real. Looks like they're about to- Did you just reuse the line you used not even four minutes ago? Thinking I wouldn't notice? Because I didn't. This is my fourth time watching it. I just noticed just now. Hey, Penn, where's Teller? Got him. Oh great, this guy's got the same stupid technology in his sunglasses. Hey Alexa, shut the fuck up. Fun fact, Cambodians don't believe in door hinges. That's why this guy was on the other side of the door. He was holding it up. That's why this is just a block. Referring back to the editing, there is a clear disconnect in what was intended to be shown and what the edit brought us. For example, some guns have a silencer attached to them, others don't. They all sound the same. 
This man has clear shots at Seagal and misses. I know this sounds like it's getting annoying and nitpicky, but hear me out. Clear shots, but they make it seem as if Seagal is not in his line of sight. And that's if we ignore the red dot sight that is on Seagal while shots are being fired. And I don't even know where that sight's supposed to be coming from, but it's there. And this is the only gunman. You leave me with one conclusion that he's aiming perfectly. And he's also shooting. Where the fuck are his bullets going? Eric Andre, is that you? So Seagal, with his gun pulled, puts on his big scary voice to try and get the situation under control. Appreciate it. Put it down! <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny to me. Put it down! He sounds like he's trying to yell, but he's not actually yelling. Put it down! Please? And that's why Zack dies. <laughs> There's a bunch of interrogation cuts throughout the movie, and I got no beef against this lady, but I do not buy her role. She is not intimidating, and any scene with her, ignoring the editing, falls flat on its ass. I will throw your ass back in jail so fast you won't even know what hit you. Answer me, Decker! So this is the big dog Orseni, or as everyone in the movie likes to call him, Orsetti. What about Orsetti? I don't know if I'm hearing it wrong. I'm going after Orsetti. I don't know if everybody's saying it wrong. Orsetti. I don't know if it's like an Italian thing, <laughs> and, and I'm just fucking stupid and ignorant. All, all possible choices, I'd say. You kill Orsetti. But anyways, this is the big dog Orsetti. He vapes. <laughs> set these men go to tie up the loose end in Cambodia and he does it by forcing her to kill herself so it looks like an accident and he forces her by showing her this picture of her mother <laughs> this was my exact face on my flight yesterday where I was trying to be quiet trying to relieve some gas this is the next scene that is pushing the boundaries of cinema. Boss Lady has the whole gang together as she addresses the passing of their fallen soldier. They all drop their head one by one as she speaks on the matter. And then she tells them they're being reassigned. I love this melting pot group, by the way. This guy's Southern, she's Asian, she's Spanish or Russian or something. She's white, he's British, Seagal's whatever he wants to be. <laughs> I'm not an Asian, I'm just an asset, all right? So if you want me to leave with you, you're gonna have to throw my ass back in jail. I'm very sure I'm she thinking, can do guys. that. I'm not leaving. Please don't do this. She's right. With every person. I'll be there. <laughs> Why is yours all choppy and shitty? So you don't like cowboys? Well, yippee ki yay, motherfucker. I made up that line. Listen, just because you got some pretty ass eyes doesn't mean I forgot that you're not Jason Statham. Jake, whatever you decide I'm with you, it's your call, mate. But if we leave now, we're gonna lose everything we have on that scumbag or city. I love how this is up for debate. Aren't you in the CIA? Do you guys really have this much free reign in front of your boss? And then she just leaves? <laughs> what? I don't know. Everyone else did. So this is what these next two minutes are. Everyone is having grainy flashbacks of their friend dying with this fucking infrared filter. There's two time lapse in the span of 30 seconds, like 19 establishing shots. Just look at the sequence. This girl is in church and then they go back to her killing that man, which is, by the way, the same exact B-roll that they use in the opening credit sequence. They get another establishing shot in a different location. They show this guy walking. Flashback, new establishing shot, new location. I had trouble figuring out who everybody was in my first two viewings of the movie. Rest assured, this type of shit did not help. He said we shouldn't tell anybody. He didn't want to break protocol. Zach was a good man. Are you dubbed? Why are you dubbed? How am I going to survive this? We will get through this. This girl used to fuck the dead guy, by the way. That's what that's what this conversation's about. So Country Boy is gearing up for his next fight against KSI, and Tom tries to convince him to stay to fight Orsetti with the squad, considering he's the only one who doesn't want to disobey the director. <sighs> Don't you remember? Jake took you in. Man, he's had enough. He's gonna get us all killed! You little marine shit. <laughs> <laughs> 
We're not oh, doing well. this. Either you guys have steel jaws, or you guys punch like me. Ben wants me to up play. You down? No, nope. not tonight. I'm uh, just gonna take it easy. Take it easy? Since when do you take it easy? <laughs> Don't look at me like that. What is this? You holding out on me? Oh, I wouldn't do that. I'll catch you tomorrow, buddy. Huh? I'm out of here. <laughs> That's the first time that that ghost fade makes sense, by the way. You're shooting one for six. So Seagal fetches the help of a Hong Kong billionaire to finance his team's mission. I'm still a little fuzzy as to why these paparazzi snapshots are even in the movie. It's one of those things where I get it, but I don't get it. I think what we need is just more telepathic interrogation footage. Where is Alexander? I don't know where he is. You're lying to me. I'm your CIA handler. You think I don't know you inside and out? You know where, know he, where is. he is. You're, You're lying, lying to me. me. Ah, thank you. I become a full partner in this whole deal. Хорошо. Full on. <laughs> Steven Seagal knows other languages and he wants you to know it. So now we've gotten to this point where there are two characters that I don't recognize, but the movie introduces them like I'm supposed to recognize them. The most I know is this guy is sent to kill Seagal. A tall task, especially when nowadays, Seagal almost never falters in a fight. It's like the contract that he wants does not allow him to even be fake punched. Oh. I love how he does all this intricate shit just to kick him in the nuts. You sent somebody to kill me, and you missed. I will kill your fucking dog. Tom calls in a favor to random hat guy and casually name drops WhatsApp. I have a very unique product for a very special customer. I'll send you the details via WhatsApp. That type of shit isn't accidental in a movie, which leads me to the other possible option, which is very surprising to me that, uh, uh, Seagal's getting sponsors out here. What's up? Wow, it's, I see you, Steve. Seagal flies out his squad for a meeting and this is just one of those fun scenes. That was dope, that was fucking dope. Super dope, should not have been in this movie. Super dope though. Then there's a third unknown person to our set is immediate circle, a computer hacker. I started tracking him using D. Wow. General public uses search engines to access index results, mostly certified and registered websites. It's what we commonly refer to as the World Wide Web. This is straight off like a Google article. What is what is happening right then, now? Then there's the deep web. Databases, software, websites, and non-index content that's not accessible through standard search engines. I'm just glad they didn't go full dark web. I think that's where they would have Then there's the dark web. Did this bitch just say dark web? In a Steven Seagal movie. Then there's the dark web. Think of it like the Mariana Trench of the internet. This content is heavily encrypted and private network access only. The dark web is Who the fuck asked you? The dark web is where anonymous buyers use cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Ripple. That was the most scripty interjection I've ever heard in my life. Cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Ripple, and Litecoin to buy guns, drugs, and organs. Did my Steven Seagal movie just turn into a Shane Dawson documentary? Why are you explaining this stuff to me? All anonymous, all untraceable. That's where I lost track of Versetti's operation. At the moment, I can't trace him or the hacker behind his transactions. Okay, so right now I have a play in place. It's a guy called Alberto. We have a meeting. That whole explanation had no purpose in this movie. What the fuck did you explain all that for? Just to say, I couldn't trace him. You had to explain the world wide web, the deep web, and the dark web for that? Is this a sponsor too? Was that whole thing just to relate to the younger generation or some shit? Like, hey, we know about dark web. We said Bitcoin. This girl's been a silent badass the whole movie and all of a sudden she turns into fucking Mudahar. I am so pissed that they said all of that just so Seagal could be like, hmm, well, I have a plan in place to do this, so. <laughs> Who gives a fuck? So Hat Guy arranges a meeting with Orsetti so the squad can crack down on him there. This guy's actual name is Amato, by the way. You need to know that for a joke I'm gonna make later. The meeting is Sonya pretending that she wants to buy a heart. But during the meeting, he remembers that he's evil and decides to cut the heart open right there on the spot. So he can see if they're really about that life. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is where the editing reaches its full form. <laughs>
So it looks like there's another hostage situation, and it's time for Seagal to redeem himself. My eyes hurt. Seagal pussies out, but they manage to shoot the driver of Rossetti's getaway vehicle. Ah, ah, exhaust but he still manages to keep driving away, even though there's a dead body in your way. You can steer, but there is no way that you are accelerating still. Is this a ginger dead man situation? You okay? No, a model's dead. The guy who got shot twice in the back and abandoned, he's dead. So they take some more shots at Rossetti's car, flip it, and now he's surrounded. And now I have one question. Are you guys ready? Are you ready? I fucking pinky promise you, you're not ready. Helicopter coming your way. Be careful, guys. Christmas, motherfucker. That's so cute. You actually thought you were ready for that. Look at all these bullets. Unscathed. Look at this absolute fucking unit. Not even flinching. Merry Christmas, See, this is the type of shit I'm talking about. When you watch that big last fight, the movie will at least humor us and let the bad guy get a slice in on, you know, the protagonist's shoulder. And you're supposed to be like, oh no, he might die. But Steve doesn't take those roles. I am the master of everything, you peasants. You think the fucking organ harvester who vapes is gonna get a shot off on me? <laughs> They show us more interrogation footage, more paparazzi shots, turns out, and I just figured this out, I guess it was this guy tracking Seagal down? The one who was told that his dog would be shot? And I still don't entirely understand the dilemma between these two, but yeah. By the way, just in case you thought this movie would end on a pretty standard note, like Seagal just disappearing off the radar while his colleagues refuse to give him up, well, you must be new here. Here's the actual ending. Steven Seagal, apparently, has a wife in the Philippines. The only preface to this being a phone call earlier in the movie that I didn't give a fuck about listening to. But whatever, they both walk off peacefully into the jungle. And then the CIA blows them up with a missile. What? Why are you this person? That's not a big hoo-ha for me, that's that's a real thing. And it still doesn't end there. It ends on an interrogation. Where is Alexander? I don't know where he is. And if I did, I wouldn't tell you. Now, if we're gonna be much longer, I'm gonna need a burger or something. Cause I'm starving. Best, the best parts of the movie. I am your superior officer. It's happy, I just, it looks like you need a beer. Where Anna refuses to divulge Seagal's whereabouts and walks out. Rosen. Making it seem as if they won. Yeah, not even 30 seconds ago, we saw Seagal get hit by a fucking missile. I would say that's an L. They won. Why end the movie making us think otherwise? The protagonist was murdered by what appears to be the CIA. I'm sure I could probably watch the movie one more time and really figure out what's going on, but I'm, I'm not gonna do that. I shouldn't have to watch this five times to understand it. What is this movie? General. Shut the hell up. So I'm currently editing this review right now. And I had to turn the camera on because I just had an epiphany. I was looking up the trailer to get some necessary footage for the video. And I'm not even gonna talk about how one of the trailers is just like a re-edit of the fucking opening credit sequence we saw, even though I just told you. But I watched the actual trailer and it dawned on me. This movie was made for the trailer. So many things that I complain about in this movie are strong points for the trailer. This is gonna sound stupid, but the movie was made to be marketed. Obviously fucking every movie is, right? But I'm trying to say that directors, writers, the people behind this movie put scenes in the movie that were really only in there to make a cute, appealing trailer. We're gonna watch the trailer. It's only a minute long, but I'm gonna point out everything I'm talking about. Watch this shit. The CIA is your home. Defending America is your life. I've done a lot of things that they will never let Exhibit you- Exhibit A, the fucking interrogation. That horrible opening interrogation was for this. So you have Seagal saying 
very vague action lines. You will never understand. That's why I'm done. I literally say, he's not saying shit. It's just diced up like a trailer. These fucking scumbags. This is dirty. I feel gross right now. I'm done. A z exhibit B, that stupid scene that's that looks like a music video. It was made to look cool. Like a trailer makes things look cool. I can't believe I didn't realize it earlier. It's edited like a trailer. This is like some Suicide Squad shit. And I compared it to Suicide Squad. It's like a Counter-Strike montage you get on Fiverr. Keep watching. We're starting our first operation. The dark web is where anonymous buyers use cryptocurrencies to buy You drugs, fucking drugs. bitch. What did I ask? Why did you even bring up the dark web? Why was any of this brought up if it was just gonna be immediately shut down in the next couple seconds for the trailer? What's a hot topic that gets the boys' views? What is luxury pranks making millions off of? What is J Station making millions off of the dark web? It's like so ass backwards. They thought of a cool trailer, then made a movie from that trailer. They even threw in those Shane Dawson edits with B-roll just to sell you. Hey, this Shane guy's getting 20 million views a video and he just fucking puts together a bunch of B-roll. Let's do that. Hey, wanna know why there was such a fucking bizarro scene at the end where this guy sets off his danger clothes for the chopper gunner? Well, we needed a flashy ending for the trailer and frankly, none of these scenes really cut it. So let's get something with some theatrics involved. Christmas mother. General Commander. Oh yeah, and I forgot to mention, this isn't even something scummy, this is just dumb. They show Seagal killing Orsetti in the trailer. This is the end, this is the last thing you're left with, the thing you are left to chew on for the movie, is this. <laughs> At least we're gonna talk about the dark web, so this movie must be lit. If you enjoyed this movie review, please leave a like and subscribe because I have more content coming your way. I'm actually gonna interrupt the flow of the outro to tell you one more time to like the video because you tend to forget, but it's fine, I forgive you. And shout out to Lori from Mars for retweeting my last video tweet. And one more reminder, Black Friday sale, 15% off, cold dongers on my new merch. And it's a dope design. It ends December 3rd, teespring.com slash badpong. And your YouTuber recommendation for this video is Spooky Rice. Spooky Rice has an ongoing series called Disturbing Breakdowns, where he watches every fucking disturbing movie possible. And then, get this, he breaks it down. I think this is a great channel for people that have kind of like that weird curiosity for disturbing movies, but maybe you don't have the stomach or the heart to just sit there and watch them in full. Spooky Rice just gently walks you through the movie. And I would normally give you video recommendations on where to start, but that's kind of difficult because it's really whatever title interests you. They're all just different movies. So just head over to his channel, subscribe, and tell him, how do you sleep at night? His channel link will be in the description. I have a really bad track record of putting the channel's links in the description, so this is me telling myself to do that. Okay. And as always, I am Mr. GG, and I... I'm out. Hey, I'm insecure. I My hair was not supposed to be spiked up in this video. It's supposed to be more slicked back. But at one point, unbeknownst to me, my gel said, fuck it, and stopped doing what it was supposed to be doing. Now, please proceed to bully me in the comments and enjoy the video. Next level.